All right, welcome back, guys. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. Today, we're going to be talking about Jordan Winnington uh, as part of this series. I know it sounds kind of redundant because I feel like I've talked about him a lot, but as a part of this series, we are going to talk about him. So before we dive into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Also, be sure to follow me on all social media at JK Bogan, including, and of course, Instagram, uh, also at JK Bogan. Let's dive into it. So Jordan Whittington is somebody that, I mean, obviously, if you've been following this channel, it's no surprise. I'm very high on. I've gone out on record to even say if anyone gets hurt of significance, he could step in and do exactly, I don't want to say exactly, but he could be the closest thing to what we saw last year with Puka Nakua. Um, now, the reason I say that, I'm not saying he's better than Puka. I'm not saying he is Puka. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying he has the skill set. He has the work, the demeanor. This is somebody that people raved about at Texas. Just how much this guy was loved in the locker room. The fans loved him. So not only is he a fan favorite, he was a locker room favorite, a leader, but also somebody that just was going to outwork pretty much most people. So the reason I bring him up, well, the reason I bring that up is because what is one and this is no knock on Puka Nakua. As I've said, I'm very high on him. I actually, after watching the tape, thought he was better than I gave him credit for. Um, but I want to make this clear. What's one variable between Puka Nakua's record-breaking season, Calvin Johnson's record-breaking season, and Cooper Cup's record-breaking season? It's Matthew Stafford. When you're a rookie wide receiver, Matthew Stafford is going to make things a little bit easier than some other quarterbacks. But in addition to that, when it comes to Jordan Whittington, who's a student of the game, a guy that's willing to, you know, fight for extra yards, be a force at, in the blocking game, do whatever he can to stay on the field and help his team win. You have that level of maturity early on playing with Matthew Stafford if he does get an opportunity, he's going to absolutely run with it. The issue is that he suffered, you know, a few injuries. He was banged up, missed like 20 something games the first three years. So, you know, to be fair, he was a top recruit coming out and injuries kind of robbed him of that. But I really believe that his best football is ahead of him. And it may not come in 2024, although I think it will um, in some capacity. But, you know, I really do suspect this guy has a long-term future with the Rams. He had 206 yards, 21 receptions, no touchdowns in his freshman year. His true freshman year, uh, he only had one catch or two catches for 17. But his actual redshirt freshman year, 21 catches, 260 yards, no touchdowns, okay? Then he had three carries for 50 yards and a touchdown. 2021, sophomore year, he has 26 catches, 377 yards, three touchdowns. The junior year of his career, 2022, this was his best year, 50 catches, 652 yards, and a touchdown. And then 2023, despite the fact that that he was sharing time with Xavier Worthy and Adonai Mitchell. And we're not talking about sharing time. We're also talking about sharing opportunities and touches and all that. He had 42 receptions for 505 yards and a touchdown. What are you getting with Jordan Winnington? You're getting a guy that can run in the four fives, maybe even the four four fives, if you want to you know, be talking about it. Because, I mean, he already put it out there that he ran a really good 40 time. He runs faster than giving credit for. He breaks tackles. He's like a running back with the ball in his hands in the open field. And so I see a guy that is going to learn. He's already very intelligent, knows the game very well, but he's going to learn around guys like Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, and Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay. So I actually think, you know, the way this wide receiver room looks, right now you have Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. They're the de facto one-two punch. Then you have Demarcus Robinson at three. You have Tutu Atwell at four. They trade away Ben Skoranek, okay? Actions speak louder than words. The Rams did not draft anybody in this draft until the sixth round with Jordan Whittington. They did not trade for anybody. They traded away a receiver in Ben Skoranek, which opened up the door for both Jordan Whittington and the next uh, player we're going to talk about in this series, Tyler Johnson. 
who did sign a one-year deal and is worth bringing up. So the reason I bring this all up is because you look at the situation. Whittington, by default, is the fifth or sixth receiver on a team that has some... I don't want to say injury-prone players, but, I mean, Cooper Cup has had a hard time staying healthy. Puka Nakua was banged up almost the whole year. He just played through it. Tutu Atwell's had injuries in the past. I mean, this is an opportunity here for Jordan Whittington at the very least. So I don't expect his 2024 to be amazing or anything like that. I don't think he's going to win, like, Rookie of the Year um, because right now he is only the fifth receiver. But if push comes to shove and there are injuries... This guy will step up. I have no doubts. What do I expect from him in 2024? I think very similar to his uh, redshirt freshman year, okay? He only played in five games, had 21 receptions for 206 yards. I think it's going to be something like that. I think he is going to see the field. I think he will get an opportunity. Hell, last year we saw Austin Trammell get an opportunity. We saw, uh, you know, in the past, Brandon Powell get an opportunity in the receiving game. It is going to happen. He is way more built to be a receiver than both Powell and uh, Austin Trammell. Okay, this is exactly the type of build that you want for a receiver. 6'1", 200-something pounds. That's what you're looking for. Okay, he has good size. He's filled out, can be a running back if need be, but he's not going to play running back. He just, he can be a running back when he has the ball in his hands. He's hard to bring down. So, end of the day, 213th overall. Ram selected Jordan Winnington, who I believe is more about the long term than right now. So 2024 might not be all sunshine and rainbows for Jordan Winnington, but I do think in very limited opportunities, unless somebody gets hurt, I think he's still going to have a role. I think he can be that guy to move the chains. I think you could put him in on third down. He can come over, you know, with the ball, you know, in his hands, you know, over the middle of the field, take a hit, hold on the football. I think we're going to see more of him, though, than people give him credit for. So, again, probably only looking at the fifth receiver unless, God forbid, there are injuries. But even still, this is not about just this year with him. He signed a four-year deal with the Rams when he was drafted, okay? Four-year deal. So his deal is last year of his deal. So this year, 2025, second year, 2026, third year, 2027 is his last year. And then you'll have 2028. He's a free agent. We'll see what ends up happening there. The Rams have him for a while now, okay? We're going to see. And the way Puka Nakua played last year and what he's given the Rams, they're ahead of schedule. It's why they didn't have to, they didn't probably, why they didn't feel like they had to spend a ton on a receiver draft capital-wise. They got Whittington. They believe in him. They like him. Coach Steve Sarkeesian has a relationship with McVay. They know each other. So there's a lot of comfort here in bringing him in. I think he is going to be a perfect fit. We, not me. I think the ceiling here is he could be the next Robert Woods for the Rams. Do it all guy, not super sexy, doesn't get credit, never listed in the top 10, but I think his ceiling is like 1,200 yards in a season. I think he can be Robert Woods, and we'll see what ends up happening. I have a very, very high uh, you know, respect range for Robert Woods. I say it all the time. The football up there, that is Robert Woods. He signed that. So, you know, I love Robert Woods. I'm not at all just trying to say Whittington is him, but I do think his ceiling, he could end up being that level of player. So I'm saying this right now. This is why I'm I'm putting emphasis on this video because Whittington, he has legitimate talent. And again, this was a five-star recruit coming out of high school. So he's got the skill set. He's got the athleticism. He's got a lot of experience playing high-level football at a high-level program. Do not sleep on Jordan Winnington with the LA Rams. He's wearing 88. Torrey Holt wore 88. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, does not mean it'll be Torrey Holt, but I am very high on Jordan Winnington, to be fair. So we'll see what ends up happening, but do not count him out. And if you're in a fantasy league and you're just watching this and you're like, hmm, snag him. Take him late in your draft. No one is going to take this guy. Take him, draft him, stash him. I'm telling you, in dynasties, he is going to be very valuable because he's got a great quarterback throwing him the football, and he's got a bunch of guys around him that are only going to make him better. Not everybody gets to be in a position out of in the sixth round. 
the position that Jordan Winnington's in. He doesn't have to come in right away. He doesn't have to be thrown into the fire. He gets to have Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua showing him the ropes. He's got one of the best offensive minds in the game in Sean McVay, and he's got one of the best quarterbacks in the game in Matthew Stafford. What else could you ask for? But that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this little preview, Jordan Whittington 2024, and I'll be back in the next video to talk about Tyler Johnson. Take care, folks, and I'll see you guys soon. Later. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.